VBA in Focus, a weekly program about important issues and events in the two Virginias. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of In Focus. We're going to be putting the spotlight on the arts this morning. You're going to hear from the co-founder and director of Riff Raff Arts Collective. Her name is Lori McKinney, and she's going to share what Riff Raff does in Mercer County, and also some information about their new original program. So joining me now in the studio is Lori McKinney. Lori, thank you so much for being here. We're excited to have you here in the studio. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So Riff Raff is launching the original program, We Need to Talk, and it uses music videos and docu-shorts. So explain what the program is for our viewers. Yeah, the intention of the program is to build bridges and catalyze community healing. So we are creating sweeping cinematic music videos and short documentary pieces with artists here in our community that have written songs either about issues that they're passionate about or just ways that we see the world that we wish the community could open their hearts to. And then we're using those videos as tools to stoke community dialogue. Right, and music is a great way to get that message across as well. So what exactly is the program's goal? You touched on it a bit, but elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, the idea is to kind of create a culture of listening. So we know that when we share our stories with one another, when we listen to each other, that's how we can connect and begin to understand mm -hmm. each other. And that is ultimately what leads us to a more peaceful and harmonious way of life. And that is what we're after. Yeah, for sure. And we'll share more about the program in just a moment. But first, for those who don't know, what is Riff Raff Arts Collective? Yeah, thanks for asking. So yeah. Riff Raff inspires and empowers creativity. Uh, we're located in downtown Princeton. We also um, just uh, do the, that work in our region and all around Appalachia. So we are so excited um, that Riff Raff is launching its first music video this morning. And it's happening right here on In Focus, Lori. So we're we're so excited to share that with our viewers. We'll have more on that in the next segment of In Focus after the break. But first, we're going to share a trailer of the program. So take a look. We all have so much to learn from each other. No one has all the answers. We may have our minds made up on a certain issue and think that there is no other way until we get a glimpse from another's perspective and hear about the lived experience from someone who is walking a vastly different journey than our own and our minds and our hearts are open. We need to listen deeply to each other, try our best to connect and understand our neighbors and help us lead towards a more just and harmonious way of life. Now, more than ever, it is vital. We need to talk. And Lori, what a powerful trailer we just saw there. So let's talk more about how the We Need to Talk program will be used to open up dialogue in our community. Yeah, so each one of the artists that we're working with, we're just putting all of our production muscle behind the artists and allowing them to, to tell their story and speak about what they feel compelled to speak about. So we're making these sweeping cinematic music videos, a lot of them with storylines and then these short documentary pieces um, around the issues that sparked the creation of the video um, and just sort of uh, what led the artist to, to be inspired to write the song. And then we're hosting a variety of community conversations. So we're going to be visiting different civic bodies in the area like here and in focus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go to Rotary Club and um, uh, the city council and county commission and the, hopefully the chamber of commerce meetings and hopefully we're going to be able to enter into some schools we're going to be working with the Concord College Bonnard program and hopefully just take these music videos and bring them around to as many community settings as we can so that we can share community conversations. And also we'll be launching them online and hopefully uh, just all at once a lot of people in our community will be sharing this conversation. And how did the idea come about, Lori, for this program to even launch in the first place? Yeah, so I'm an artist myself and um, been writing about you know, issues I feel passionate about and just ways that I see the world mm -hmm. and uh, have just been grateful to attract all kinds of different artists here to our community that share this similar drive to use their creativity to make a positive impact on the world. We're seeing all kinds of wonderful creative people look at here to our local area and they cite the reason for their move because they recognize that here in our local community we have the ability to make an impact. Definitely, when creative forces come together, the collaboration can be so strong and powerful and effective in a community as well. It can. So the goal is to open up dialogue. You touched on 
like some of those entities where the dialogue might be happening, but are you targeting any specific group? You talked about rotaries here on InFocus, but are you targeting any specific group? We really just our, our entire community. This particular video that uh, we're gonna watch today is just really setting the stage for the program and it, and it explores kindness, why kindness matters and that the ways we treat each other matter. Yeah. Uh, encouraging people to just open our minds and our hearts to different perspectives and listening to each other. It's really about connecting and trying our best to understand each other because we know that now more than ever, it's just so important mm -hmm. um, here locally and just globally that we all try our best to, to tune into each other and um, become more harmonious with each other. Yeah, and you know what? It costs zero to be kind. It costs nothing to just be kind and, and to be nice to one another. So what a powerful message. Well, Lori, we do want to take a quick break. We do have that video to watch after this break, so stay with us. Welcome back to this edition of In Focus, everyone. This morning, we've been talking with the co-founder and director of Riff Raff Arts Collective. Her name is Lori McKinney. She'll join us again in a moment. And we've been talking about the new We Need to Talk program featuring music videos and docu-shorts. So, Lori, we are about to watch the very first video. You're launching it here on In Focus. We're grateful for that and excited to see it. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm excited, too. Absolutely. And before we play it, is there anything you'd like our viewers to be aware of as they watch this music video? Yeah, I'd like for everyone to just sort of uh, understand that this was created by local artists in your community. So everyone that you see, local faces, local places, it was created by the community for the community. And I would just ask everybody to keep your hearts open and really, um, as you're watching the video, and pay attention to what comes up for you as you're watching this video. Okay, great, Lori. Without further ado, let's take a look at that music video.
Never there was a time when it mattered more. That was absolutely beautiful, Lori. That touched my heart. That touched my soul. You wrote that song. That was you singing, and your husband's part of the band as well. Let's talk about the song, and then we'll go into the video making behind it. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I really uh, find joy in creating music, and sometimes I feel like the, the songs and lyrics are just kind of traveling through me, like I'm just a conduit uh, for the music, and I'm really grateful to be able to share it. Um, I just have felt for a long time that the importance of, you know, allowing ourselves to, like, tap into our inner voices and express them with the world and do what we can to connect with each other and, um, you know, make the world a better place. What's the name of the song? It's called The Time Is Now. It's interesting, we wrote it all the way back in, I think it was 2017, and the opening line is, never there was a time when it mattered more. And it becomes truer every day, and I think it's true in every moment in the course of history, and particularly now. Definitely, and how did the words come to you? How did you end up writing that song, and then you sang it, and making the whole thing come to fruition from start to finish? It's an interesting process. Uh, my husband, Robert, and I met 20 years ago at an open mic night in Hinton. Okay. And I had been um, writing songs, and I don't play an instrument. I had all mm -hmm. these melodies and lyrics. And mm -hmm. Robert, before we found each other, he was always just strumming his guitar, and he doesn't sing. And huh. When we met, it was just like rivers converging as yeah. one, and the, the flow of the music together just kind of became one. And we just started writing songs together and never stopped. That was 20 years ago. And the way that it works is that Robert will just kind of find a chord progression on the guitar, and mm -hmm. he... Um, it'll just strike me and I'll just mm -hmm. begin to sing kind of improvisationally and then yeah. a lot of times the lyrics will just kind of come out and flow out and we'll be like, oh, we need to press record and so we'll <laughs> press record and sometimes we'll capture, you know, parts of the song that uh, never change from their original sort of um, uh, framework and parts of this song were much like that. We wrote the first verse and the chorus pretty quickly and mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to travel a little bit. We were actually in Santa Fe um, mm -hmm. and we were on um, this amazing uh, mountaintop uh, or a hilltop and uh, the second verse just sort of flowed right out in that moment. I could, it was wow. something, something different about that setting. You just felt yeah. like connected with, um, yeah. you know, beautiful nature. Yeah. And Wow, no, that's incredible and that you two are just a great duo that you came together, him with the guitar, and your your voice is beautiful. Thank you so much. I really and appreciate that. You're a beautiful writer too. I Thank just you. love the lyrics. Let's talk about creating that music video and what went into it to get that started. Yeah, there were a lot of moving parts and the concept came about, you know, pretty quickly, this idea of opening our hearts and our minds to other perspectives and how important that is right now and sharing kindness and allowing people to express themselves for who they are, be themselves, and you know, not judgment yeah. and uh, so the ideas started to flow my sister Melissa McKinney she is an incredible artist and human she started mm -hmm. in stages music school uh, back in 2008 and she is really good at stories and I brought this concept to her and she helped me kind of think through the various scenes and how the um, you know the arc of the plot could like move forward mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is a remarkable young lady in our community named Riley Odell who um, past uh, uh, way before her time uh, this yeah. past year and she was supposed to be in this music video she loved um, she loved our neighborhood and she was all about spreading kindness uh, she said if you can't find the sunshine be the sunshine wow. and she was all about spreading kindness she was had wisdom far beyond her years mm -hmm. and she knew how important it was to pass on that kindness even when people aren't treating she was treated in ways that she shouldn't have been treated and instead she showed kindness to those people and we knew that we had to dedicate this video to her and so each is seen you might have noticed that there's a sunflower in each scene yeah. and that's an honor of Riley. Oh, well that's a beautiful tribute to Riley and like she said be the sunshine if you can't find it you can be that sunshine and be the kind person. Yeah. It's wild I think sometimes we feel the weight of the world on our shoulders and we yeah. think we have to what are we going to do to fix this world? But in these these small moments and the ways that we treat each other and the, the, the love and kindness that we can show to another, we never know how far that impact is going to reach. Right, and that the ripple keeps going. Yes. All right, well, Lori, we do have to take one more quick break. We have much more to talk about. We'll be right back after this. 
Welcome back to this edition of In Focus, everyone. I'm joined again with Lori McKinney with Riff Raff Arts Collective. And Lori, we just watched your beautiful music video. Oh my gosh, I'm still thinking about it and the images and your voice there. It was just so beautiful. And the message really is treat others with kindness. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Love one another. Yeah, love one another, exactly. And this music video was a long time in the making, so let's talk about how it all started and just how long it took to make it come to be. Yeah, so this concept has been developing in our minds sort of for the past couple of decades, and the program really started to tune into focus um, on, in August of 2020. We had the opportunity to uh, write a grant to the National Endowment for the Arts, and it was only because the world was paused that we had time to actually write an NEA grant. You have to write the project a year in advance, and I think on the NEA's part, they have you do that, so you're very strategic in your planning, and um, it, it, you know it really works to cause you to very much think through a project. So in August of 2020, we put the project down on paper, and we got notification the following January that we were good to go on the project and there's so many moving parts with bringing all the different local partners together we partner with the the city of Princeton and of course the WVVA and community connections and um, stages music school and all these different local partners to, to bring the project to fruition in this particular video as you saw there are a lot of local settings so we grant supermarket and Dolly's diner and we worked with the Mercer County Board of Education on the school bus and all the different locations and all the people and all the actors that came together Together. It was quite a process. It's been a couple of years in the vision and planning and, and filming process. And of course, it's just not easy scheduling everyone. So it, it took longer than we expected, but I think like uh, it, it, it always is the case when you think of a big picture project, it takes longer than you expect that it will. Right, exactly. And this is only the first of more to come, as you said. Like the, the goal is to open up conversations with community members. Yes, this particular iteration of the program has eight music videos and docu shorts that we're going to be releasing this year, just one after the other. Probably about every month and a half, we'll be releasing a new video into the public but we love this work so much that we're uh, going to be carrying this program in indefinitely into our future I think this we need to talk and the core of making these music videos and docu shorts will be a, a core part of our programming just from here on out and Lori where can people at home go to find these videos and when will they know when they're launching so today uh, you can actually find them um, on Facebook Instagram mm -hmm. YouTube and Vimeo and then uh, the riffraff.net slash we need to talk will have the videos all the videos hosted there and the schedule of conversations that you can participate in. Great, so go to all the social media pages for Riff Raff Arts Collective then. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So what else would you like viewers to know about the song that you wrote and sang, maybe the band, and you also touched on the local businesses and groups that participated. Let's talk about how um, just the local collaboration was so crucial to make this project come together. Yeah, I think we have so many remarkable people in our community doing such good work. I mean, they're like everyday superheroes all around us, and we look to the people that are helping others and, you know, working to make the world a better place. And there's a particular group of creative people, artists and musicians and poets, and uh, they're, they're here in a local community, and the population of them is increasing every day. We have people moving into our local community to be a part of it. And in this video in particular, you saw um, now a local actor, Julie McCullough, who yeah. has done remarkable amounts of film and television. She was my, one of my favorite television shows when I was younger, Growing, Growing Pains. Pains. Yeah, yes. she played the nanny on Growing Pains. And she was born in West Virginia, and she decided mm -hmm. she wanted to leave the Hollywood life and come live mm -hmm. a small town life because she's attracted to this ability to make a difference and make an impact with the creative community here. Um, the, the grocery shopper, Harrison Crawford, is an amazing painter and artist, part of the Pigment Sanctuary, a group of artists who have also relocated into the grassroots district. And they are here because they recognize that they can make a difference in the community with their art. A lot of times people just get lost in the sauce of big city life and you, you just want to make that impact but here in Princeton it's kind of become like a laboratory for testing ideas and and sharing your work in a different way that you can really kind of get in and dig in with the community and be a part of it so and then of course Brady Walker who played the the kid at the bus stop who was bullied the remarkable young person since he was five years old he he had this calling to um, to help people and he founded a program called Seeds of Love where he would ship seeds all over the world and, and all around West Virginia to help people grow food wow. and just get in tune with a healthier lifestyle and just to share those seeds of love so just remarkable cadre of amazing um, creative people it was also really wonderful just to be welcomed in by Dolly's Diner and the yeah. folks at Grant Supermarket. They were so gracious to allow us to use their locations and everyone was just so wonderful. And I think just the overriding sentiment is that we have a wonderful community here, yeah. wonderful people. Yeah, we, we definitely do. And the, also, Laura, you touched on this earlier, but the project is supported by an Our Town grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. So how does that work? You mentioned earlier it could take like a year around about to 
get that approval. How does that work? Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a process, and it moves at the speed of government. <laughs> so it's like they really um, sometimes can feel like it takes forever. But there's just a lot of uh, people talk about jumping through hoops, and really there's just a lot of T's you have to cross and I's you have to mm -hmm. dot. And I think a big part of why the National Endowment for the Arts awarded us with the ability to do this project is we've been working for 20 years at this, and so this project builds on an established cultural infrastructure that we have been working really hard to build, and they recognize that. But anyone who's interested in, you know, if they have an inspiration to do a creative project, people are welcome to reach out to me. I love to share the information about how you can activate ideas that you have and how can you, you can seed um, work that, that you're interested in doing. So please, anyone out there that would like to, um, like to learn more, please reach out to me. Okay, wonderful. And you mentioned uh, some of like the partners like Grants, Dolly's Diner, or those who got involved, but really Riff Raff has collaborated with community leaders and partners in Mercer County area for nearly two decades now, Lori. So yeah. what does this project mean for the area and looking ahead for all those partners and just looking ahead for the future? Yeah, I think this project represents a deepening of our connections. So, so many people are connected and we've been aware of each other and we have great relationships, and, but we're all kind of like in our different uh, sort of lives doing all these different things. And I think this project is going to be an opportunity to find ways to more deeply partner with and connect with each other, get to know each other better. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, for sure. We have just a little bit of time left, Lori, about a minute or so. What are some concluding thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers or if there's one or two takeaways from the video and the project that you've launched, what would those be for those watching? I think everyone knows that right now, this moment in time, we're, we're looking at um, a need to find a new way, find a better way to go to go about life. There's so much tension, so much struggle. Everyone yeah. is in so much pain. And I think that everyone, if you're living on planet Earth right now, you have been through trauma. You have been yeah. through struggle. You've been yes. through pain, and you're dealing with so much. And I think right now, more than ever, it's important for us to open our hearts, open our minds, yes. listen to each other, listen more deeply, yes. be willing to hear another story, be willing to share our own perspective, and find out ways that um, that, that we can make it make it a better place well exactly and like we said earlier in the show it costs nothing to be kind to one another to compliment someone just to make someone feel better you know it's a ripple effect you do that for someone they're going to hopefully pay it forward so I, I'm just so grateful that we got to talk this morning Lori we have we got a chance to see the first music video and I want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in this morning so again thank you Lori we're, we're so happy that you were able to make it and share this information thank you so much Melinda <laughs> And that does it for this edition of In Focus. Remember, this show is a community affairs show about people and events in the two Virginias. If you have an idea, you can always email me, mzosh, Z-O-S-H, at wvva.com. That does it for us this morning, though. We have hope you have a great day. We'll see you next week.